Hi there, everyone. My name is Prerag Juthani. I'm an MD MBA student at Yale. And today, uh, I'm going to talk about if routines actually work. And the reason for this is because there was a actually monumental, well, not monumental, but a pretty, big, pretty big study that was released in a journal and also talked about in the Harvard Business Review that questions a lot of the things that we associate with routines and increased productivity. And this channel is all about helping you get more insight into the way that you function and be more time effective. And so by jumping into this paper, we're going to kind of challenge existing notions about routines and show you when routines are beneficial versus when they're not. So the basics of this study is that according to research and conventional thinking, habits are more easily formed and retained when they're in routine. That's actually what the predominant literature has shown and actually multiple self-help books reaffirm the fact that if you have a routine, you are more likely to be productive. However, that is very, um, it's, a, it's not a black and white discussion like that. So a new study has actually found that in many cases, a certain amount of flexibility boosts results. And if you know me, you'll know that I'm a big fan of flexibility. I rarely have too many routines or, or schedules. So we're not going to discuss what this study showed and ultimately why it kind of not debunked, but at least challenged the existing notions of routines. Um, this study was with 2,508 Google employees, and all of these individuals were enrolled because they wanted to be more fit and go to the gym more frequently. So uh, the psychologists in this study created an experimental design to see what sorts of regimens would be more likely to instill a habit of going to the gym for these individuals. Participants, uh, these 2,508 participants were set up into five different groups, and I'm going to show you what they were. But basically, there were there was a flexible group, which was Individuals were given between three to seven, either three dollars or seven dollars for going to the gym. Doesn't matter what time, but you just had to go during a certain day. And then there was also two routine groups that were paid between three, um, that were paid either three dollars or seven dollars for going to the gym, but they were only paid that money if they went during a certain time in the day. And then there was one control group. So two flexible groups, a three dollar and seven dollar group. Two routine groups, a three dollar and seven dollar group and one control group. So now here is exactly what we talked about, except in a picture form. You can see that this is 2,508. Uh, randomly, 1194 are assigned to the flexible group, which is they're paid for any workout. And of this 1194, 600 were paid $303 per workout for four weeks. 594 were paid $7 per workout for four weeks. And then 1182 were assigned to the routine group, which means that they were only paid for workouts initiated in a certain time window, which means they're trying to incentivize them to go at a certain time and instill a routine of working out. And then there's this control group, right? That wasn't actually given any money at all. So this now is in theory, hypothesis would be if you think routines are better at building habits, this group will not only go to the gym more, but after this intervention has stopped, these people will continue going to the gym more because they're so used to going between 5 and 7 p.m. That would be the hypothesis. The results are actually very exactly the opposite of what I just said. So let's discuss the results. So it turns out that the routine group offering $7 incentive payments, and these are this is taken all from the paper, by the way, uh, and the flexible condition of offering $3 incentive payments generated approximately the same number of intervention period gym visits. So what this means is this group, this group that's being paid $3 to just go whenever they want to go, and this group that's being paid $7, which is more money, right? You would expect someone who's being paid $7 to go more frequently than someone paying, being paid $3. They're going at the, about the same time. Uh, they're, going the amount, uh, they're going about the same amount of times per week. And what that tells you is this flexible period, actually like the flexibility allows these individuals to go more, even though they're not in being incentivized nearly as much as these people are. Uh, and that's because the flexibility gives them like a little bit more runway, right? Um, and so that's, that's what this first sentence is saying. Um, and then it also said with the routine condition generating more in window gym visits, visits that began during a participant's chosen two hour window and fewer out of window gym visits. And this is expected because if you're only going to get paid the $7, if you go during the certain time, you're only going to probably go during those times. However, here's the really, really interesting part. Exercise fell off among all incentivized groups after the intervention. So once they stopped paying them three and $7, Obviously, most people stopped exercising as much as they were before because they're not getting paid for it anymore. But the drop was five percentage points greater among the $7 routine group than, than among the $3 flexible group. So the people in this group that were being paid $7 to go work out at a certain time for four weeks, the moment that this experiment stopped, most of them stopped going right away. 
On the other hand, this group, when they got stopped being paid $3, most of them also did stop going, but they didn't stop nearly as fast as these people did, which means they actually had a much more habit-forming uh, outcome as opposed to these people. Because the whole point of the habit is you train your mind to do something, and then once you're done with that training, your mind just does it, right? And so this four-week period was the training, and once you stop that training, will you keep doing it? Well, it founds that these people actually did not stick to it nearly as much as these people, which suggests that routines didn't work nearly as well in this format than flexibility did. So our simple model of habit formation suggests that routine incentives are unlikely to be more effective than flexible incentives in dynamic, fast-paced work environments, but may be more successful in stable environments where they can reinforce the development of routines that are less prone to disruption. So for example, a routine may actually be really good for something like taking a medication, right? If you're gonna take your medication every day after you brush your teeth, that is where a routine may be great because that's something you do every morning. It doesn't change. It's very stable. There's a cue and then there's an outcome. But if you're working at Google or if you're going to be a medical student where every day there's something different, you never can predict you know, which patient's going to potentially crash. You don't know what's going to be in store for the day. You have so many variables up in the air. In that regard, a flexible reinforcement pattern to develop habits may be much better and beneficial for you than a routine. And this is something that I think I need to keep saying over and over again because I think there's so much um, misinfo on like the fact that people who have routines are more productive. And when I can tell you for a fact, I personally am so much more productive when I don't have to stick to a routine because I'm able to kind of cater my energy accordingly. So now let's just end with this last slide. Uh, these are the conclusions for the study. We conclude that while routines have been proven elsewhere to be important in habit formation, it may be challenging for managers to encourage routines in an environment with frequently shifting demands on people's times, such as, I would argue, medicine. And again, this is why routines may not actually work as well. Routine incentive schemes may be more effective when applied to behaviors and environments for which the best opportunity to take the desired action is consistent from one time period to the next and routine incentives are unlikely to be more effective than flexible incentives in dynamic, fast-paced work environments, but may be more successful in stable environments, which we discussed previously. So hopefully now you can see why stick to a routine isn't always the best advice. This study is really interesting. It's obviously going to be linked in the description below, as well as some additional articles uh, that, that were written about it. If you, if you enjoyed this video, please do drop a like, comment, share, subscribe, and thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.